Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to join the nodes from two different paths and make them into one object in Corel Draw. Now I'm using Corel Draw X8, but this should work in any modern version of Corel Draw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to view and make sure my guidelines are turned on, my alignment guidelines and my dynamic guidelines are turned on. And then I'm gonna make sure it says snap to objects. We can also do snap to guidelines. So that way it'll snap to the guidelines and it'll snap to the objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out a guide here kind of in the middle of the page and I'm gonna get my Bezier pen. So I'm just gonna click and draw a shape here. Then I'm gonna click off of my drawing pen. I'm gonna right click on a color just to give that a color and increase the stroke size. That way we can kind of see a little better what's going on. Blow it up here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here on this little X, I'm gonna drag to the right, and you'll see I have the little guides at the top and the bottom to show me I'm in alignment. And I'm gonna right click to make a copy of that. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna mirror that, drag it over, and I'm gonna let it snap to that object and to that line right there. Now I know I have them lined up perfect and each object is still an individual object but I'm gonna show you how to connect them. So I remember when I first started using Corel Draw, it took me a little while to figure this out because in Illustrator, you can just select the two nodes, hit Command J, and it'll join them together. So it took me a little longer to figure this out in Corel Draw. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that will not work first. Let me blow this up just a little bit more. Now the first thing that I tried was getting the shape tool, clicking here and clicking here, and then what I did is I selected both of those nodes and highlighted them. And I came up here to where it says close curve, click that, and that didn't give me the result I wanted. All that did was close each one of those shapes individually, but that's not what I wanted. So then I thought, well, surely this button here that says join two nodes will work, but it's grayed out, so that's not an option. But what I discovered was that if you have a path, one path, and you want to join the two ends, that you can get the shape tool, select both of those nodes, and then click join two nodes, and it will join them that way. So join two nodes only works if both nodes are on the same path. You can also grab one node with your shape tool and drag it over on top of the other node. And when you get this little down arrow, you can let go of the mouse and it will join them together. But that only works if the nodes are on the same path. So let's go back to our original shape here and we'll try something else. So we'll click both pieces. And we still have both of them selected with the shape tool. If we click on close curve, then that does the wrong thing. Then that just closes each shape individually. And that's not what we want either. If you did get to this point, you could always select both of them, hit the weld button, and weld those together into your shape. And that would connect them, and that would connect them joining the paths. But if we still have the two shapes like this that are open at the end, if we select both of them and hit weld, you can click it and it will move them as one piece but if you get your shape tool and click on the nodes, they're still not connected. It's still two separate things. So even if you tried to weld these together, it may appear that they're welded together, but they're really not. If you try to add a color to it, you'll see you can't fill it with any color because they're not actually connected. Even if you had these welded together and got your smart fill tool, and tried to fill this with the Smart Fill tool, you could do that, you could bring that shape out, and then it would be connected. You would see that it would create one graphic. Let's undo that. All right, so the next thing we wanna look at is, again, if we just have these two pieces butted up against each other like that, we could select both of them, get our Smart Fill, click there and it would fill it, but that may not always work because your paths may not always overlap each other enough for it to feel. Another way you can do it is grab both shapes, go to Object, Combine, and just like Weld, it'll look like it's welded together, but it's really not. If we get our Shape tool and click on the path, you'll see that the paths are still separated. But what you can do is, after you combine them, again, you could get the Smart Fill tool, click in there, create that shape, and the nodes would be joined together that way. So I've showed you a couple of ways that it won't work, and I've showed you a couple of workarounds with using the Smart Fill tool, but now I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. 
So the right way to do it is select both objects with your pick tool. And then what you can do is on the keyboard, hold down shift, control, and press the key J. So that's shift, control, J. And you'll bring up this little endpoint tolerance box. And since we have both points on top of each other here at the top and at the bottom, we can just put zero for the tolerance and click OK. And now that join together our segments. So again, if we have them right on top of each other, select them both, shift control J brings up the tolerance. Since they're on top of each other, we'll just say OK, and that will join our segments together. So another thing we can do is if we have two objects like this and we want to join them together with that gap in between, we can select them both. Shift Control J brings up that tolerance again. And you can see right now there's nothing in between. So we're going to increase this to 0.5. And if we click OK, it joins them together because we gave a little bit of tolerance for it to extend this on out and join them together. So again, if we do Shift Control J, if we leave that at a zero tolerance and click OK, it's not going to join them because it's not going to go past the node to try to join them together. So if we do Shift Control J and we do 0.25 and hit OK, that's still not enough tolerance for it to find that intersection point right there. So if we do Shift Control J and we do maybe 0.3 and hit OK, now that had enough tolerance for it to find that intersection point and connect the two shapes together. Okay, so the very last way I'm going to show you, which is the correct, correct way. The keyboard shortcuts work great for a lot of things, but sometimes you need a little more control than just adding a little bit of tolerance. So we're going to come up to Object, and you're going to click on Join Curves. And when you click on Join Curves, it's going to bring up the Join Curves Docker in your Docker palette. And you'll see you'll have a bit more control in joining your shapes together. So with both objects selected, we have Extend here, which is pretty much like the tolerance box that you get when you press Shift, Control, and J. The only control you really have here is just the gap tolerance. So we could just say zero since they're right on top of each other. Hit Apply, and that will join the nodes together. Again, if these were spread apart and we wanted to join those together, we could select both of them. And we have about a, almost a two inch gap in between there. So if we do maybe 1.5 inch tolerance and press apply, well, that wasn't quite enough. Let's change it to two, press apply. Now we had enough tolerance in there for it to join them together. But you'll notice something else when you use this docker. When you put a number in the tolerance, say two, you'll see this little blue line appear showing you that you have enough tolerance for those lines to connect. If we just put one inch in that box, then the little blue line goes away because one inch is not enough tolerance for those to intersect and connect. Even if we do 1.5, then there's enough tolerance for it to connect there at the intersect point. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is chamfer, chamfer, chamfer. Anyway, it creates a flat edge. So you can see that unlike the extend option, where it extends these lines on out and creates a point at the intersection, this mode chooses the shortest distance between point A and point B and draws a line there. So we just have a straight line across there instead of this coming on down. Instead of the extend mode like this where it comes up to a V shape, chamfer just cuts it off and just makes a straight line. So we can apply that and it would connect it together with a flat straight line. Then we can come down here to Bezier Curve and click that. And what that's going to do is just put a little bit of curve there where it connects them together. And you don't really have any control over that curve. It just kind of puts in a curve that it thinks works the best to connect those two. So we're going to undo that. I'm just going to move this down for a minute. I'm just going to draw a few lines. And I'm going to rotate this one. So the last one we're going to look at is this fillet. Now with fillet, you have options for tolerance and you have options for radius as well. So we'll put that on zero. First thing we'll do is we'll select these two lines and you can see there's not enough tolerance to connect these two together at an intersection point. So we'll raise that up to three and now you can see that at three inches of tolerance that's enough tolerance for them to connect here. So you can hit apply and they would connect. 
Now, if we didn't want that to go to a point, we could adjust the radius. We could say 0.25 radius, and it would round that off and connect them. And we could adjust this radius. We could say one inch, and you could see it would curve there. We could even say two inch radius, and it would connect way down here. You could see it would move the connection point way down here. The radius would be two inches. All right, so let's set these back to zero. And with these same two selected, let's say you wanted to connect them at the top and you also wanted to connect it across the bottom. Well, we know three inches of gap tolerance will get the top ones to connect, but not the bottom ones. So looks like we may have to go up to four, maybe five inches. So let's try four inches, not quite enough, four and a half inches. There we go. Now we've given it enough tolerance that it'll connect the top at the intersection point and it'll connect the bottom two. So if we hit apply, it'll turn those two lines into a triangle. Again, we can add some radius, 0.5, and you'll notice it'll give this top part a curved connection, but the bottom part, it'll just stay straight. And the reason it does that is because this line is going off to the right and this line is going down that way. There's no intersection point beyond this for those two to cross over and meet. These do cross over and meet at an intersection point, so that's why you're able to control this curve. These two will just keep going away from each other. Since there's no intersection point anywhere else, it just draws a straight line. All right, so let's add this third line into the mix. I'm gonna shorten that up just a little bit. We'll add that third line into the mix. We'll go back to zeros on these, and we'll add that third one into the mix. Now when we set our settings, it's gonna to look to connect here, it's gonna to look to connect here, and since these two are gonna connect, it's gonna connect those two here. So if we say three inches of tolerance, well, that's enough to connect these two points, but not quite enough for that one. So let's try four, there we go. So four inches of tolerance is enough to connect all of these points together. Click apply, you got a big triangle. And again, since all three of these corners intersect at some point, we have control over the radius on all three sides. So now we could say 0.5 and it would curve all three sides because all three of these corners have an intersection point. So we can control the radius on those intersection points. And we can hit apply to apply that and it'll draw a triangle with rounded corners. Now, if we, join, if we added in one more and had four, let's say we had these four pieces and we changed to the Bezier curve. Since we don't have any control over the curve, it's just gonna draw its own curve. So when we click on that, you'll see we get some pretty ugly curves, but we don't have any way to control the radius for the Bezier curve. That's why this fillet is the best one to go with because we have control over the radius of the curves and everything. So if we want, instead of 0.5, if we want that to be one inch, we could change it to one inch and it would adjust on all sides the curve and we could apply that and now we have you know that shape so like i was saying before the bezier curve you don't really have any control over the curve um, to me the fillet is the one you would probably use the most often because you can either just use the tolerance part and no radius or you could use the tolerance part with the radius and be able to control the radius and the tolerance and everything with fillet and again, like I said, with these two shapes, if we select those two shapes, we can just use extend on that since the points overlap each other. You can just leave that on zero tolerance and hit apply. And then that's just gonna join them together because they're already on top of each other. It just joins those two nodes together. And just one last little thing I wanna go over is with the circle tool. When you draw a circle with the circle tool, you click on the shape tool, you'll notice you have one node here in the middle now, if you click that node and drag it around with your cursor inside the circle and you let go inside the circle, it'll change that into a half circle. If you have your shape tool and you click this node and drag it around halfway and you drag outside of the circle, then that'll just leave you a path in the shape of a half circle. If we get our pick tool, we will drag it over here and lock it to that guide we put in place. We'll click here, drag out, right click to make a copy, We'll reflect that and we'll bring this over and we'll lock it in there up against that other one. We'll select them both, shift control J, and that should have combined them together, but it didn't. So let's select them again, shift control J, and still nothing. We can select them both, come over to here to our extend, 
zero gap tolerance, we can click apply. Still nothing. It won't join those two paths together. We can select both of them, get our smart fill tool, click on it, and that'll fill it. So we can make our shape using the smart fill tool with that. But the reason why the join curves wouldn't work is because these aren't really endpoints like regular endpoints because we can still move these and reshape that circle. So when that happens, what you have to do is select those, right click, convert to curves, and now that makes that into a regular path with regular nodes. So now if we come over here and do Shift Control J, now that brings up our tolerance palette. Click OK, get our shape tool, click on that, and now you can see that it's joined it together. We can also use our join curves docker, hit apply, and that will join the nodes too. We can grab one of these, space it apart, grab both of them, adjust our tolerance, and you'll see that it's gonna intersect them. Hit apply and join them that way. Chamfer will just connect them with a straight line. Fill it, we can adjust a little curve here if we want to. So we have a little bit of control over how those are joined together using the join curves. But just remember that if you try to join them and they won't join, you might have to create outlines for that path before it'll work. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you would like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.